Welcome, everybody, back here to Siegel Talks at the Martin Lee Siegel Theater Center, the Greta Center, CUNY in Midtown Manhattan. We have a beautiful June days here, uh, extraordinary days after a little scare um, of the forest fires coming here from Canada, which was an apocalyptic uh, setting and reminded all of us how connected really everything is and how close these uh, uh, current problems which we are experiencing with the climate catastrophe really are and it will will be many, many more of those days, I think, ahead of us and the role of the art to make us uh, aware of where we live, how we live, what we are doing and what should be done better is becoming, in my opinion, more and more important. Um, part of a cultural and artistic, like in every city, is our festivals, whether they're music festivals, whether they're exhibitions, but also theater festivals. And New York uh, always can use uh, more festivals. We just experienced the closure of the um, Under the Radar Festival, a very sad Thing. There's no really big, big uh, theater festival in the United States on the scale of Avignon and Edinburgh. We are working in, on it and hope something might be possible um, one day. But there's one festival which over the years uh, has done, I think, an important contribution being a bridge between uh, America and the world, especially Europe and especially uh, Central Europe. It's the Festival for the Truth and uh, a rehearsal for the truth, it is uh, called. And uh, we have with us um, Pavla and Edward who are uh, running or will be running and this festival, is, I think it's over 10 years old. We will hear a bit more from Pavla who is running it. And uh, with us is uh, Lu Lucia Mann from uh, Berlin with strong ties also to the, the Czech Republic, um, who just was a guest here at the festival was the play called The Astronaut. I think it would went very, very well, I saw it. And so we're going to talk a little bit uh, about that uh, play, which is the experience of a Czech refugee Jewish family and uh, coming, uh, having to leave um, the country. The Bohemian National Hall is the host. Uh, it's kind of the Czech cultural center. And with us is uh, Pavla Niklova, who um, is the director of the center. Pavla, tell us a little bit uh, um, uh, about you, where you are, but where are you at the moment? Uh, hello, everyone. Hi, Frank. Thank you for inviting me to this wonderful discussions. I'm happy to see all of you. I worked with all of you recently, so it, it's a pleasure to see you again. And uh, I, yes, as Frank said, I'm in New York at the Bohemian National Hall, which is an old cultural house built at the end of the 19th century. And it's always belonged to the Czech community of the Upper East Side. And uh, there are different organizations that prepare their cultural programs and uh, diplomatic events. Um, and uh, on behalf of two of them, I was happy to start an annual showcase of Central European theater. The first year was in 2017. And uh, we've been able to continue since. Uh, it's 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 an exciting project. Um, the main organization that's <clears throat> excuse me stands behind it is the Václav Havel Library Foundation. And Václav so Václav Havel, the great playwright and also president of the Czech Republic at the time, yeah. And so the festival is called Rehearsal for Truth, uh, and it's a festival honoring Václav Havel. What's the idea, Rehearsal for the Truth? So um, there's one saying that Václav Havel is famous for, and that says that uh, truth and uh, love must prevail over hatred and, uh, and lies. And uh, so that's where the truth comes from. Uh, the festival is because, of course, Václav Havel was, was not only a famous president and dissident, but first and foremost, he was playwright. So that's why we decided that with our programming in New York, it would be very appropriate to honor him with theatrical programming and performances. And uh, we decided to start with Central Europe, with the uh, countries that are called Visegrad countries, which may not, it, it's a term that we haven't used that much. It's not that known in the United States. So we prefer to call it Central Europe, but. These are the four countries, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, and Poland, that are close neighbors and that in many respects shared common history, particularly last, the second half of the 20th century, 
when uh, all, all of our countries were under were like satellites countries of the former Soviet Union. And Václav Havel was convinced that we these four countries should work together, that they should approach the Western world, the Western Europe, European Union, and um, other associations basically together. And that in that way, our voice would be stronger, which I think he was absolutely right. Uh, what these countries represent these days, it, it's another question, but I still believe that um, we have something together. And also there are theater institutes in all of these countries, as Frank, you probably know that have a lo long history, who've been working together. So although in, on political level, these countries are not always uh, united and they present different nations depending on who, who what the government is i think in uh, the area of theater and performing arts uh, they've shown remarkable uh, ability to collaborate over over many years mm -hmm. so tell us a bit of festival how long is it how many companies or plays or is a music film or what's what's the idea so we started in 2017 and uh, we started with four productions from those four Central European countries and they were really uh, European productions that that came to present in New York. It's very difficult for European uh, companies to present in New York uh, to get a working visa to pay all the expenses. Uh, the travel is, is expensive. So um, we we call it festival, but it's in real terms, it's really a showcase. So that means that each company plays once or twice and we don't sell tickets. And in that way, the companies don't need to have working visas. So it's really more of a, they, they come to show what they've been doing. And uh, so we started 2017, then in 2019, we added a spring kind of new series uh, where we present staged readings of European plays that have been translated into English. So um, again, we, we love to present works that have been translated to, to uh, New York and sometimes international audience and work with local artists, directors and actors to try these works on stage with the hope that maybe um, the New York audience will see the full production of these plays. Mm -hmm. So every year uh, we present from around, let's say, 10 events, so usually more. And it went within two weeks. Um, Something like the that. The festival is running. Yeah, um, amazing. Um, what are you looking for when, when you select? So uh, I always try to keep in mind one of, Havel wrote about theater. He wrote about many things. And one of the things he wrote is that uh, it doesn't matter if the play, if the performance in the theater is a comedy, tragedy, or different form, but it should be addressing some of current political or social issues. So that's what we've been trying to look at when we, before we decide that we would like to present a particular production. And so, for example, this year it uh, happened that we had three dance shows in a row and it was a very exciting uh, run. Uh, we worked with uh, Czech, Slovak, American and Russian artists. And um, it was a very, very special series that we were very happy to present. We also had music. Last year we had a big concert of, um, by uh, Terezin Music Foundation. So we try to combine different arts forms to create kind of a taste of Central Europe, but more and more we also work with local artists. That basically came in, particularly with the pandemic. In 2020, we could not do anything. And in 2021, in June, still and no European artists could travel to the United States. So we decided to work with European American artists who live here in the city. And we created a very beautiful collaborations. And uh, we thought that that would be the best way to continue in, in further in future years. Mm -hmm. If I understand right, also your term um, at the uh, Bohemian National Hall, the Czech Cultural Center, I think that over 22 organizations in that one building also a fantastic 
restaurant and a bar with check beer on draft, uh, beautiful space. But uh, your term is coming to an end. For how long have you been here and how was your experience in New York presenting art from Europe? So I, you, you are right. I've been here at the Bohemian National Hall for uh, 13 years. I, I, but I worked for different organizations here at the building. So I started as an official uh, Czech rep representative running the Czech Center New York, which is the equivalent small, very, very small equivalent of Goethe Institute or French Institute. And that's how I started. And then I was lucky enough to, uh, to get a green card and to start working for the Havel Foundation that is located here at the same building and to work with other Czech experts Czech expatriate organizations that are here. So uh, that was one of the really nice things that uh, I've been always trying to collaborate. I really like to work with partners. I believe that it's it's um, it's one of the strengths in arts to connect people and to bring uh, more organizers, more artists, just to, to be open to new ideas. So that's been one of the wonderful things that uh, we've been trying to do here at the Bohemian National Hall to really, and not to be only, uh, so Bohemian National Hall is mainly Czech cultural house, but uh, I've always tried to, to invite, well, first the Slovaks because, because they, they are the closest and uh, we really, have a lot, a lot of in common, and uh, but then also through other European cultural institutes, I, I we try to work with with Austrians. Uh, we have very good relations with the Polish Cultural Institute, so that's been a really uh, one of the best experiences working with other European partners here in the city. Yeah, it's truly amazing, and you made a great contribution. Um, to the city of New York, where uh, Tony Kushner once said it's the melting pot that never really melted. But I think uh, the Bohemian National helped to melt and to invite people, local and European, Central European artists. We have great audiences, you know, which is not easy to get uh, over time. You know, that reputation of the festival um, grew. And it's really one of the beautiful um, e events. And I like, as you said, it's free. It's donation based. It's a gift in a way. Uh, and if, as a small organization, as you pointed out, it's absolutely remarkable um, and what you did, how you created, and that everybody knows. You might not know who is the writer, who's the musician, what's theater play you might see, but you will always know something went uh, through your mind, your organization's mind. It's always an interesting work. Um, um, I, if, I, yeah? if I may, I also would like to say that... Uh, it's also, it, it, it's everyone who comes to perform here adds their work and uh, funding as well. European companies apply for travel grants to be able to come here. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs and New York State Council on the Arts. Thanks to their grants, we can afford to, to, de to do this relatively already big event. Yeah, that's really great with such limited means that you were able at least to host an interest. And it's a lot of work. I know I've seen you working and I also know how much is so all my respect and a great job done. And we will miss you. And the city um, was better because of you, but you also left a legacy. With us, we have, uh, of course, Lucia, who we will come to you, uh, who did the great astronaut play. Um, but Edward Einhorn um, is now with us and he will take over as the director for the festival, which of course is our main interest here at the Siegel Center. Edward, tell us a little bit about you and your special relation to Václav Havel. So um, back in the 2000s, I was doing a, a number of festivals um, uh, with my theater company. I, I run a theater company, on top theater company number 61. And in 2006, um, we did a festival of all the work of Václav Havel. And um, it was on his 70th birthday. <clears throat> and uh, fortunately, it turned out uh, to have, we had a very fortuitous arrangement with uh, Columbia University because they also wanted to do something with Havel the time. And so uh, th they brought him over and he was here for the full period of the festival. Uh, so got to work with, um, in, 
with him. We got he was able to come to see the shows, um, and he uh, it, during the time of the festival, which was um, basically from late uh, October to like early December. Um, he came to the theater multiple times, and then uh, that created a relationship uh, that continued um, in, until he passed away. Uh, and so we presented a piece, The Pig, which I uh, worked on the translation for, and we presented a, uh, a piece called The Velvet Oratorio, which was about the Velvet Revolution that was presented at the Bohemian National Hall. And so we have this ongoing relationship with Havel, but also um with Czech work, uh with Czech history. And um, you know, uh, I've been working with Pavla for since she she's come to New York. So um uh first with the Czech Center, then with the um rehearsal for Truth Festival and uh done a lot of artistic work together on, on that end. And uh also uh, uh on my own, partly because of the, the, these relationships, I've done work about uh, Terezin. I've done work about um, I wrote a play about Rudolf the Second. You know, I've, so there's there's been a lot of work that's uh, that's related mm -hmm. to this. Um, uh, and um, you know that the the original festival remains this very important part of my artistic life. Um, and and that and uh, you know because I had been a uh, admirer of Havel from the time I went to college. Uh, that was around the time of the Velvet Revolution, um, and uh, I had also discovered his plays around the time right before the revolution happened. Uh, and then he was suddenly in the news, and uh, it was amazing. And um, and the first show that my theater company did was uh, his play Audience, um, which was uh, is one of Fitzvaniac plays. Um, and uh, and then after the the festival, we also published uh, all the new translations that were done uh, in relation to the festival. So we have a five volume set of these uh, of these uh, Havel plays. So um, uh, yeah, you wrote the introduction, a beautiful edition, and we have to talk maybe with this. Siegel Center, we can reissue them. So, um, what kind of person? What kind of person was Havel? But tell us a little bit that combination of a political thinker, but also then who became president of a country. But also he was a player. How was how was he as an artist? What did you learn from him? Um, he was very approachable. Very, you know, he just. I mean, I didn't have the honor of knowing him before the presidency, but it was not. It felt like the, he was probably the same person before as he was after, and um, I think one of the things that I found really touching during the festival is that we did um, uh, we had a revolution party, um, and uh, it was uh, you know on November seventeenth at the Brick uh, in uh, in Brooklyn, which is a small theater. A small independent theater, and we didn't expect Havel to actually arrive at that. Uh, we were showing a, a play of his, Temptation, um, but we figured, you know, uh, he had diplomatic events. Uh, we invited him, of course, but we didn't expect him to come. Anyway, he arrived with the with everybody in tow, and there was Madeleine Albright and some ambassadors and the Consul General, and what, and uh, they all came to see the show. And then they uh, then they stayed for the party afterwards, and he made a speech saying that you know there was uh, there was no place that he would rather be uh, on the anniversary of the of the revolution, and you know, and to us in the independent theater world, it just felt like he was one of us in in a, like he's he was a person of the theater essentially. Um, this was where his joy was. This is where his love was, and that had never changed. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, his reaction at the party, you know, was uh, and this sort of camaraderie was the same as as anyone who was working in independent theater. Yeah, uh, amazing. It's an artist 
you know, one of us, as you say, he went to jail for his opinions. Uh, it meant something. Freedom of speech meant something. Free artistic yeah. expression was something you had to fight for. And, um, and he really cared about art, but also was politically involved to uh, make life better, better to have less suffering and to find solutions uh, for problems. You will take over from Pavla, if I understood right, for the festival. What are your ideas? What are your dreams? What will you change? What will you continue? <laughs> um, I don't know the answers to all those things yet. Um, I, you know, the, the, uh, Pablo talked about his quote, the truth and love, um, must overcome lies and hatred, which is a very important quote of his. Um, the, the one that I associated with rehearsal for truth has always been, uh, his idea about living in truth. Um, and he talks about how, uh, it's important to speak truth, even when it's difficult to speak truth. Um, and, uh, I think that is also an, a very important artistic as well as political uh, principle. And so that's one of the organizing th uh, ideas of it uh, for me. Um, but I think that, you know, what, what Pablo has done so well is finding work that um, follows in his tradition, both uh, artistically and uh, morally. Um, and uh, I think that's, you know, uh, that's what I would, be looking for. Um, I think that it's very, there's so many important issues and they're different issues, but they're also similar issues uh, that uh, to those that, that he addressed and, um, and finding ways that uh, theater and uh, dance and, and the arts can can address those issues uh, is really, you know, compelling to me. Um, and, uh, and I think one of the things that, uh, you know, the, one of the reasons the Velvet Revolution is particularly inspiring to artists is it was, you know, it, it, it there was a theater artist in charge, it was organized in the theater, uh, you know, there were, like, there was so, you know, there, there were these dissidents who were speaking out and, and so many of them, uh, worked in theater. And uh, and it shows the potential of what the arts can do in difficult political times. Um, and it's not always going to achieve that. I mean, you know, we're not going to have revolutions led by, you know, uh, an artist every every year. Um, but I do think that there is a leadership that the arts can provide in looking at moral issues and um, and that's the sort of work that I would I would be looking for. Mm -hmm. Pablo, looking back at your five years or six years of the festival, what was what is important? What do you feel as a curator also? What what did you learn? Um, th there are many things, but I, I'd like to uh, react to what Edward just said about um, uh, what kind of works he would like to present. And um, yesterday we closed the festival with a performance by a, a Romanian artist, Alina uh, Sh Sherban. And uh, it's her autobiographical piece about her difficult life, how she was growing up. And um, she never gave up, she made it. She now performs not only at the National Theatre in Bucharest, but uh, she also performs here in New York. She studied at Tisch School and NYU. She got different scholarships and she did her master's program in London. And so um, there won't be like uh, artist president every year, but there are those different other um, levels or, 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 or things happening to people that, that show how our arts are important. And also she said, and I, and I know that, but she was, she was, she mentioned it yesterday during the talk by Alina that every art is political yeah. basically. And it, it's, uh, means every good art or basically every art, every art that has something to say is in one way or other political because it comes from the current situation and speaks about about issues mm -hmm. that are that are painful or asks questions that are painful. So that was also one of the lessons that I learned that that really these things can be impressed in expressed in in different artistic forms and um, 
And also, and then one interesting point from the production point of view was that um, you would think that uh, that to bring the full productions or to prepare staged readings, that the full productions were, would be more complicated. And it turned out the other way around. The stage readings were much more organizing because we had to find, you know, we, we had to ide identify the play that was more, that was really the festivals. That was our job to do that, to find suitable planes, plays, to find a di Amer American director who would like to do it. And then the director and to get, or sometimes together with us would be looking for the cast. So that actually was more, more work than if you just present a full production. And, um, and uh, also I would like to say it's, uh, the artists are really grateful for all these opportunities for learning about European plays. And, uh, and I know it's not very common, but I know about, and not everybody reports back to me but I know that some people who met European playwrights because of our stage reading series, they've been in, they, they stayed in touch and they are thinking about creating a project perhaps in Europe. So that, that has been really good, that it has some follow-ups. I know about two productions that we presented that then had a full run at La Mama. So who never want to credit us, by the way. But uh, uh, otherwise, um, it's 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 been really nice. It's been really nice. Mm -hmm. Before we come to Lucia, what else? Over looking back, what was some of the production that you keep in mind? What what do you think that really represented what we were looking for? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, was that a question for Lucia? Um, Lucia, yeah. Um, oh, sorry, this was for uh, No, 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 for, uh, for Pavla, some of the, in your festival, what, what, what companies, what productions um, stayed in your mind? Uh, well, we have very strong collaboration with the Polish Cultural Institute and Tomek Smolarski, who's been producing just, just wonderful things and uh, a couple of plays. Um, one of them was like, all the text by Vitkachi that, that we had two years ago, uh, directed by Daniel Irizari, and that was a kind of a huge show. And um, uh, after the pandemic, it was so refreshing and relieving that we can still do a live theater. So that is definitely one of the very important ones. Then I remember very well our first performance, and that was uh, by theater group that is now at uh, Divadlo na Zavradli Theater at the Balustrade, which was Václav Havel's kind of home theater where he produced his play. And it was about two famous Czech uh, theater people, uh, George Voskovets and Jan Verich, who, who were a very important couple between the wars and then George Voskovets emigrated to the United States after the war. So we had a full house and everybody loved that performance. And then of course I have in mind the show that just finished. So that's that dance trio that we had over the weekend was really strong. And of course, uh, and I hope she will perform more Yelena Demyanenko, who's American Russian choreographer, dancer. She lives in the United States. So she met, she met with another Russian dancer in Berlin, Tarik Budnash, and they started working on a piece and basically asking question, what should Russian artists do with the invasion on Ukraine? How they should react? Um, what's gonna happen with, with Russian artists? So yeah. that, that was a very special, um the performance that we presented i think they will still develop it but they 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 performed in berlin they performed here um yeah it will be interesting was, yeah how, how much i saw that with katsi production i think one actor took the took the advice break a leg a little bit too literal um uh, in the show i think he broke his leg i saw the great trapdoor theater the um, project play i saw this was also absolutely brilliant and so so much more, but we also have with us an artist because, of course, it is important to listen to the voices um, of the artists 
um, this year. Um, also, it was Dorota Maslowska came back, as you said, with the Polish Cultural Institute, and with her play Bowie in Warsaw. Also, a beautiful, I thought, reflection on, on a, a moment in time in the early 70s where Bowie, like a messianic angel, for 40 minutes touched the ground coming out of a bus after a concert in Moscow or something, and, and about the people of, of that time. And then we had Lucia Mann um, with us just a couple of days ago with her play, um, The Astronaut. Lucia, first of all, uh, thank you for listening and in and for joining us and for being a patient. Where are you now and what time is it? Well, thank you, first of all. Um, I, what time is it? I'm in Berlin and it's 7.30 here, p.m., 7.30 p.m. And yeah, thank you for, you know, having me like, giving me the chance to perform the play in New York to the Martin Theater Center and also to the Rehearsal for Truth Festival, which was really a pleasure and it was really great to see it on stage. What did it mean for you to show um, a work which is kind of deals, maybe say a few words uh, uh, about this, the content? The content of the play, yeah. is, it's, a, it's a father-son relationship and it also shows how emigration shapes your life and the advice that you give to your children, the relationship between children and parents and how it takes you away from, yeah, your, not necessarily your roots, but what other people have if they always stay in the same place. Yeah, it's an immigrant, I think, from Czech, from Czechoslovakia at the time, um, who in the early 70s, I think, immigrated and talk to a son who happens to be in an astronaut uniform, can't really move, can't really say anything. And the father has a long monologue. T tell us a little bit about the idea. Why, 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 what does it have to do with migration or the immigrants? I think it's your taste. So basically when you are, most of the immigrants or immigrants, they lose all their contacts. I mean, they have to make new friends they only have a few family members if they're lucky with them. And they just, it's not the same as for people who are all their life in the same place. They don't have their school friends. They don't have, you know, they're, where they were educated is not in the same place. So you feel probably a little bit alone, you know, like for example, my father didn't have, also my mother, like they didn't have passports for some time. So then you can travel and you feel probably isolated in a way so the son that the father is not able to communicate with the son is also a sign of isolation in some way but it's also if you don't look at the politics at all it's also just a parent-child relationship where sometimes you see a person as a different you know someone can be in an astronaut suit in front of you maybe they work for NASA but you don't see it and you ask them questions like what are you doing or your child is an artist and you don't accept it and you think, what are you doing? So this is, I think, also simple. Mm -hmm. What did it mean for you to come um, over and tell a story as a, a Czech German story, if I, if I uh, remember right? Well, it, it meant a lot to me. It was very nice to have, to be able to show the um, performance to an American audience or like an international audience in English, which is also very special. It's, I think very, because I'm, 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 of course I'm from Germany, I was born in Berlin, but I don't feel 100% like German because of my Jewish background as probably other Germans would feel. So I think this is a kind of a special perspective and I'm happy to have the chance to show this perspective in the US. Yeah, and I understand also the actor um, was from a Jewish family that fled Germany, grew up in the United States, went back yeah. to Germany, a great successful career, and came yeah. back for the first time in his life to perform in the US. Yeah, exactly. The actor's August Zerner, and his parents were Austrian Jewish refugees who came to Illinois. He grew up there until he was 17 and then decided to go to Germany. And he's American, so he speaks... American English, he learned German. And yeah, this was his debut basically in English, which was very special for him, also for us. And we worked with the director, Arnon Grünberg, who's a um, Dutch writer, very successful. And it was a nice, you know, European Jewish 
group. It was really nice to do this. Yeah, and I want to point that out to show what that Bohemian National Hall, the rehearsal for Drones Festival, is a space that opens, that invites, that makes such unique things that would never happen. This would not have happened without the festival. That yeah. you also took a risk, you know, Pavla, uh, so you know, well, we don't really know how it will be, but you said, we will give a space, we will give you um, room, you will have to find, you know, some funding to come here, but we can support you uh, when you're there. And there are few places, um, as we all know, not enough places. And I think this is why the work of the Rehearsal for the Truth Festival and so many others, um, cultural vendors in New York City, but I think especially the, uh, the, the Czech Center as the Japan Society or the Romanian Cultural Center actually also and uh, the Goethe Institute and French uh, Alliance Francaise do. It is such an important uh, place um, to give a home and to also create a dialogue between continents that often are like very different, um, different uh, planets. Um, Lucia, you also come from a literary family and some famous and not so famous, you're the great granddaughter of the Mann family, Heinrich Mann, who was the brother of Thomas Mann. Your grandfather was Ashkenazi, a famous Czech writer. How do you deal with this um, as a writer to have such a legacy and then whatever, coming to New York and expectations to yourself? And other, how do you, is that something that encourages you? Is it something that uh, stays in your way? How do you deal with it? I think if at all then it encourages me it doesn't stand in my way i don't compare myself to heinrich mann for example obviously um no foundation for that so I, it's, it just shows you i think as an artist like whatever your parents do you know like not as an artist but in every field of your parents are you know like mechanics or lawyers or something it's always something you get in touch with and you you probably learn a little bit as an early age you know from it so I think it gave me the chance to see that you can be a writer as a profession. Although I didn't do this right away. I studied business first of all and went a different route. But um, yeah, I think my grandfather, Ludwig Ashkenazi, had definitely a big influence on me because I read all his, you know, like books for children when I was a child. So I think he, yeah. I think about them often when I write. Mm -hmm. So how, how is your relation to, since you live to Czech Republic and, you know, that's through a detour, you know, at the Czech uh, center of the Bohemian Hall. Well, how is your relation to, to a, a country, you know, with that difficult history of immigration of your family? How, how, how do you feel that at the moment? Well, at the moment I feel, okay. I mean, there are lots of things to discuss about politics and stuff which we're not doing right now, but I don't have... I, I love the Czech Republic now. I like Prague a lot. I, I spend a lot of time there. My father lives there. We work there together often. So I, I have a very good and strong relationship to Prague. And my mother left Poland in 68. So there was also a very anti Semitic time in 68. So I think because I have spent less time in Poland and it, I have mixed feelings, of course, towards like towards these, you know, events, but about the countries I'm going there and I'm happy there and I know a lot of people who live there and it's all fine now. Mm -hmm. So, and how was the audience? How did the American audience react to your um, to your work? It was very interesting that a lot of people came to me and um, because it's a father-child relationship and the son is in an astronaut suit. So I feel like a lot of people uh, had their own, you know, their own reflections on their own life. So I got a lot, basically almost every person who talked to me said, oh, I'm thinking about, you know, my parents or it was horrible to be here with my son because it showed us, you know, that these relationships are difficult and we saw some things that happened to us also or, yeah, I think people really have their own, they see their own life when they see this show. Yeah. Which was very interesting. Yeah, I think the great, the Harold Pinter, the great uh, writer, you know, um, who, who said that he also writes because he wants to show that human relations between men, woman, father, son, mother, daughter, or whatever, that they are so often so in, 
uh, impossible to really uh, live to. Um, they're not compatible. And that language itself also is limited yeah. to communicate what you really want to say. But on a stage, when you see people pretending to do something, you listen to it in a group of others, all of a sudden, for a moment at least, you know, it gives uh, some meaning, it gives peace, it's a secure space, and it questions who we are. Um, a question to um, um, uh, both of you, these, these stories of immigration, refugees, um, a political um, um, uh, uh, persecution, is this also something that went through all the five years? Are you gonna continue that? Is that the kind of the main center of the festival? Maybe Pavla first. Um. It, it wasn't at the beginning, but there are some years when it's more present. I think it was last year when uh, we basically, we had one project. It was a small exhibition and book presentation and talk. Uh, the, the book is called uh, Ticket to the New World. And it's, it's about um, Czech and immigrants artists who actually managed to escape before the war and uh, found their home in the United States, in New York. And then we also had that concert by the Terezin Music Foundation who celebrated uh, Czech musicians who, who, were, who were imprisoned in, in Terezinstadt. And uh, I, I keep hearing that basically Terezin became the cultural capital of Europe during the war. And uh, so it, 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 was, it was an amazing night. And so, so it somehow happened that we had, uh, um, that we went back to, to the Second World War and uh, presented both artists who, who perished and artists who, who managed to escape. And it's also, I think, uh, in, in a way, it's uh, more common in Central Europe because we had to go through those 40 years of communism and that wasn't a free time to reflect back. And so I think many stories actually, it, it, it took longer to, to make, um, to make some, some peace or to speak about certain things. So it's actually, it has never been planned in advance. There's not a particular theme for any year of the festival, but um, somehow things usually, uh, the, the, I, I feel also some, some natural pro process in it. And, uh, and uh, so sometimes it's more about immigration and we presented, we presented at the place, Slovak place also dealing uh, with, with the second world war or or with people who immigrated from Slovakia to Canada, that was one state reading. Um, so it is, it, I think because of the history of, of, the, of the war and then after, uh, of the communism, when many people emigrated, there were several waves. So I think it's natural that this theme comes back. Edward, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, I mean, I'm also Jewish and I have uh, that connection to to a, a lot of people who had to immigrate um, and uh, and have done a lot of work with Terezin. So I uh, there is I have a natural interest in that sort of uh, question. And I feel like uh, modern immigration and the, the question you know, um, is a one of the um uh, important uh like political moral issues of the day so of course um since uh this is you know there's we want to do art addressing these sorts of moral issues uh that's going to be one of the themes i think that crops up um uh as pablo says i'm not i think I'm going to see what the work is out there, and and there there will be a shaping of of uh, the th thematics, partly from seeing what artists are talking about right now, um, and I think that you learn a lot just by looking at the work that's being created, um, and uh, and seeing what what various artists feel like it is important to address. So. Um, uh, I think there is, 
I mean, as always, like, you know, that I want to be guided by the, you know, the, these sort of underlying principles. But I also think that is that it's equally important to like listen to be to what people are talking about uh, and be reactive to that rather than to impose the thematics beforehand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so it's so and very very true. And as Pavla pointed out from her talk last night, every uh, theatrical, every artistic um, action is actually an action against violence, against war, something for the truth. And um, and theater at the moment is so in Ukraine we might be not able to stop the war, but we are witness and we can then retell the stories, the stories of World War One, of World War Two, of the Holocaust. Uh, uh, I know uh, Edward, you did the Theresian start, the cabaret. Um, and, and so I think it's a an significant, important function. Also here in North America, where perhaps the, the memory of history is very short. And um, and as someone said, uh, and I often said, you know, you should really study history to understand that people forget history. You know, so, um, so it is, this is a great a contribution um, that this festival does also in a bit uh, out of uh, commercial restraints so really a uh, uh, present work that is often also complex complicated but in a way very local but individual but very very um, universal. Um, Lucia for you um, uh, to come um, here experiencing this center um, how uh, will this influence you? Do you think this uh, will, uh, is it, did this change something? Or is it just one stop out of many? I know you work a lot in film and television also, but how, how was that experience for you as an artist to come here, spend time and redo or do the show? It was a very good experience. I think it's, it's great that the tickets don't cost anything. So it's, it's very nice to invite people and not have them you know spend tons of money I think especially in New York where tickets are usually quite expensive it's nice to have art for free basically in that sense at least for the um you know the guests and it's yeah it's great that you can you know you can see your own work on stage and you can you know try out new things and you can see if something works, you can observe the audience, you can have conversations afterwards. So it's very nice to be able to, um, there's good communication. It's nice that everyone is exchanging their thoughts and you know, maybe what, you know, to change next time or, uh, for me, it was a very good experience. I feel like I want to perform The Astronaut a million times now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a world premiere. Also the festival gave it a chance. Okay, um, okay. What are you working on now? As a, what are your upcoming uh, theater projects, at least? My upcoming theater projects were one that is so I wouldn't go on record yet saying what it is. Vaguely, maybe just the idea. Vaguely, it's about a historical figure and people discussing how to present that historical figure because everyone has a different opinion about the person. Mm -hmm. That's the next question. Very good. Very, that was really, <laughs> very well done. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And otherwise, I'm, I'm doing film projects where, for example, I, I focus at the moment. I mean, you know, things change all the time. But at the moment, I'm focusing on contemporary Jewish life in Germany but from a comedic point of view. So not on a serious, like to make the Jew more normal in Germany, basically. Yeah. And well, tell us a little bit, I know you also have a play uh, running at the moment. You're also a novelist, you did children's books, you, you know, put the Havel edition together, but tell us a little bit about also your work as a writer. So the play that's performing right now, it's at the New Ohio Theater. Um, and it is called uh, The Shylock and the Shakespeareans. So as you might guess from the title, it's a, um, a take on The Merchant of Venice um, from a Jewish point of view. Um, so the Shylock is a man named Jacob who's a jeweler. And it sort of centers the Jewish characters and 
deals with the connections uh, between the sort of anti-Semitism of Shakespeare's day to modern uh, surge in anti-Semitism. So there's both like modern social issues, but how they connect to the to these sort of ancient lies, like the blood libel that were sort of uh, embodied in the uh, the Shakespeare play. Um, and it also uh, addresses um, immigration <laughs> uh, as well as other um, sort of moral issues uh, in the context of, of dealing with the place. So, and um, it's a comedy that, that turns tragic. Uh, yeah, and, and amazing, yeah, also at a place, you know, the new Ohio that's also shutting down. So we experience at the moment, you know, the dying of a lot of institutions, new ones are sure will come. But it is complicated. I just heard that Alex Rowe, the Metropolitan Playhouse, uh, will close, will not reopen. Um, yeah. So it makes this festival also the one you will guide um, even more important. And who knows, it might also expand, you know, yeah. in a way on the mission. Uh, Pavla, um, tell us uh, about your work. What's lying uh, ahead of you? Um, where will you be going and what will you be doing? Um, so that there's a big change ahead of me that's going to happen already next week and I will be returning to Prague and I've been honored to lead the Jewish Museum in Prague from July 1st and um, it's an institution that I'm familiar with. I worked there for six years before I came to New York so I'm kind of in a way I'm returning home. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful place. It, we will celebrate 120 years in, in 2026. So um, there's a lot of things to do. I think the pandemic hit the museum quite badly. Now it's things are, have reopened. And uh, what I'd like to do is to kind of uh, elevate the museum to more international level and to for example, start some collaborations with the Jewish Museum in Berlin or in Warsaw, and uh, we will see how that goes. Uh, but uh, I'm very excited. I I still know some people who who work there when I worked there. So it's uh, and we already started planning some things for for Franz Kafka's anniversary. Who the museum actually doesn't have any of his archives, but uh, we still, I think it's not possible to, to miss his anniversary in Prague. So we hope, we hope to open the museum for, so that it's not for tourists who come and go really quickly, but we would like to offer something for them to come back, to stay longer. And again, like what we've done with the festival to, to show something contemporary, uh, to ask some questions and, uh, and we will see. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, fantastic. What will you bring from New York? What uh, will be um, 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 uh, different as if you would have stayed back? What will you take from you for your experience with the festival here and the city and the life? Well, one thing is that you have to dream big. Uh, so uh, I, I'm really planning to, I, I will try to persuade people about the biggest project we can think of, and then we will maybe <laughs> start <laughs> scaling down. So um, so that's one thing that I, I learned that people are really hardworking in New York. That was one thing that that somebody told me, you have to slow down when you come to Prague. You can't expect people to work in the same pace as, as, as you are used to from New York. So that's one thing I will, I will, I will try to keep in mind. Uh, and then what I learned here also, New York is a multicultural city, truly. Uh, and uh, I have two adult, young adult children and they went to public schools here. Many of their friends come from different parts of the world. So I learned that um, about other cultures that you really don't meet. In Prague, Prague is still a little bit, it's in middle of Europe, but it's, it, it's still a little bit like a enclosed place. So I, I'd like to open that as well to 
be more open about other cultures. Um, and uh, and and I actually hope I, I had an opportunity to meet with uh, some people from the Jewish Museum on the Upper East Side and from the Museum of Jewish Heritage, Battery Park. So I just hope I hope to create an international advisory board and really to stay in touch with with people who try um, to focus on arts and history and to present stories in a meaningful way to to contemporary viewers yeah. and audiences. Yes, and how wonderful what an exchange you brought here, you know global art, global artists um, into this city and this city then also changed you from its context, from its mix up and you will go back and bring something of that New York spirit. You know, in a way it is a city of the future. And I don't know any other like this one where people really try to live together with all the complications and to form something. Um, Edward, so um, how can people uh, send all their plays and choreographies and ideas um, how will that work? Are you going to travel around? Can they send it to you by email, call you up or wait for you um, <laughs> at the entrance of the Bohemian Hall? How does that work if anybody has any ideas? Um, I'm I'm open to, to people uh, contacting me. However, I, I mean, uh, I haven't really set up shop, uh, so it's harder to say, but, uh, but I've been actively asking people about um, ideas and, and shows they've seen. And I'll probably end up asking Pablo when she goes back to Prague, if she sees anything uh, that she would suggest. Um, and then uh, I have my own website at redeinhorn.com and it's always, it's, it's very easy to contact me directly. So um, there's like a contact thing on, on that website. Um, and so, you know, I'm always open to people contacting me that way. Uh, with something exciting that they want to talk talk yeah. about. And I'm sure the rehearsal for Druze Festival has an email on the website, a contact yeah. information. And so it's an open breathing uh, uh, art center. I think it's quite, quite beautiful. Close to us actually also is the Hungarian American Library with a performing space. So something is happening there on the Upper East Side um, where people should go and can go. And I think it's a fantastic um addition to the artistic and cultural life in the city. And um, let's see, where will you stay? Are you staying in the summer in Berlin? Uh, will you travel around? Uh, where do you do your writing? Uh, uh, I will do, I will spend the summer in Berlin and then I will start a writers in residence at the Jew Meter, Meter Center for Jewish Studies at the Ohio State University in August. So that's where I will be in August, if you're looking for me. Amazing, very good. So um, thank you all you know, for participating and, um, and we have perfect timing as it should be in our um, conversations. Thanks to uh, HowlRound again, Vijay and Thea for, for hosting us, for being such great partners to bring also the kind of a, of a global view um, to, to, to the Americas and to the great nonprofit platform, digital platform of American theater, HowlRound. Thanks to our listeners who are listening in. We had some technical complications, so we had to postpone the talk. And But I'm so glad and we got it all done. We got Pabla just before she's leaving the last week. And we got Edward just before he's starting. Moments of transitions are of interest. And great that we had the astronaut play um, here with us. It was very impressive to see that, uh, that almost like this uber popper, that puppet of an astronaut, um, where the image of the actor reflected on his golden screen, but so he was talking to himself, maybe he was a ghost of the past or not, and I think um, it showed us um, what theater in a way is all about and also what's at the core and the center of the festival, which is an encounter and things of movement and everything in life um, is an encounter and I think Pavla created next to many other things she did a great uh, a great uh, forum, a great um, uh, platform for um, such encounters and giving space to others, working tirelessly a bit, of course, behind it. But we really appreciate it. With all our respect, and we would like to thank you. In the name of all the artists who are at your festival, everybody in New York City who came to your work, and we are going to miss you and hope you will be back and hope we will come and visit you. So thank you all, and, um, and uh, goodbye. Thank you.
Thank, Thank you. you.